Hey, Comp Train, happy Sunday. Hope you had a great weekend. Macro, micro, mixed bag for our coach's corner. So week 11 of Racehorse. And inside week 11, a couple of things to mention. Number one, it's our last week of stamina squats. So five, 10, five front, 10 back, our fifth and final week coming back up this ladder. So hopefully we PR, gonna take those same weights as before, add three to 5% for one last go around. On that note as well, we're not gonna stop squatting for the open two. Each week we'll definitely go heavy, each and every week before the open, but we're gonna no longer do our statement squat sets. Number two is the next day, heavy direct interference workout. And I wanna bring this up because we're gonna do more of these as we approach competition. And what direct interference implies is similar movement patterns that impact each other, with the ultimate example being JT. Ring dip, handstand push-up, push-up. In typical workouts, we'll program with elegance, something like thruster, pull-up. You have your lower body push, upper body pull. They work in tandem because the limiting factor is not exactly a muscle group, it's your lungs. On Tuesday, we're going the opposite way. I've got a couple together, burpees and handstand push-ups. So what does that create for us? A new, unique challenge where we need to think on our feet and adjust the way we attack the second set of handstand push-ups, given how our shoulders are even more tired. So good way to challenge ourselves on a mental level, cerebral level, if you will, and really focus on pacing certain movements. We'll see more of these leading into the open. The last one is, I mentioned on game day Friday. So this Friday, we have a workout we haven't seen just yet on our Friday streak. We've done a couple heavy lifts after a Metcon. We've done just a raw, beefy Metcon. This coming Friday, we're gonna ascend a ladder inside of a workout. It's gonna always flow from burpee box jump overs into bar muscle-ups into clean and jerks. A little similar to what we saw last year in the open. Climbing in weights, seeing how far we can go inside this chipper, going towards a heavy barbell at the fifth and final round. That's it for Macro Micro. Let's go to Coach Jarrett for our mixed bag. Hey, Comp Train. Um, want to take a few moments to talk to everyone about how we can possibly reach our max potential when we're going through workouts here uh, today. I'm reading a book called How About Do You Want It by Matt Fitzgerald. And there's a concept he talks about in there about walking on fire. So I want to present to you guys um, the idea of two different athletes. Athlete one um, has a huge capacity. Um, think biggest engine in the gym. Athlete two, not as big of an engine, but still fairly fit. Now, let's pretend each one of those athletes is standing right next to each other, and in front of them is a bed of coals, so a hot bed of coals that are on fire. And in the distance, there's a wall. And the closer you can get to that wall, that represents your physical capacity that you can do in these workouts. Athlete A with the big engine, the wall is further off in the distance than it is for athlete B. Now, however, Let's say in a workout, we get to the final two minutes, athlete B really wants this workout. They really want to win this workout. Now, if we go back to our analogy of, of walking on fire, let's say the workout gets to a point where it's so uncomfortable that athlete A decides they want to step off of their hot coals. They don't want it that bad. But athlete, athlete B, even though their capacity isn't as much, they're willing to reach deeper in to that capacity. They're willing to walk a little bit further on those coals in order to win the workout. And that's kind of what we want to talk about here is how can you push yourself to the limits that you can in each workout. So this is a great example that the most physically fit uh, doesn't always win the race. Um, mental fitness counts here as well and that's what this concept talks about. How can you mentally go to that dark place and walk yourself down those coals and, and endure that discomfort a little bit longer than another athlete. There's three factors that we can look at uh, of how to do this. Um, one, we've already talked about, it's how bad do you want it? That's why it's important to have that, that, that deep connection to what you're doing and why you're doing it. If we can really connect and have some intention to our training and more important, our competition and races when we're there that day, that goes a long way. Two, um, how far is left to go? So if we're in a workout and there's a mile left to go of a marathon race, that's not that far. So you can kind of play those, those games in your head. How much am I willing to hurt for, or, or endure discomfort for how much longer I have to go in this event? 
And three is what is your past experience? Have you done this before in a competition where you've been able to close an event or close a race with that hard drive to the finish? And it also refers to training. And we've talked about this before where when do we go hard? When do we pull back? So our ability to train properly and experience those discomforts and in training walk a little bit further on those hot coals um, helps us determine when we can do it on game day. This is how upsets in sports happen where you'll watch a race or a sporting event or a team where clearly one team is more physically prepared or more physically fit than the other. Um, the Miracle on Ice hockey game is a perfect example of that where a team was a huge underdog but they wanted it more and they were willing to push harder to get it. Um, an example that I can give you that you can try or have already tried before is let's say you're in a workout, a 20 minute AMRAP and you're deep into this thing and with two minutes to go, you are struggling. But over the speaker comes your favorite song, your energy picks up, your mood picks up. That had nothing to do with improving anything of your physical capacity. It was just you making a decision that you wanted to push harder and the music that you heard was just simply the trigger that allowed that to happen. There's an old term that we don't use as much in CrossFit anymore, it's fire breathers. And, and these were the terms that we would term for people what we look at our games athletes today. People that were able to go so hard that when you were done, your lungs were burning and you were breathing fire. But in order to get to that point, when we're in workouts and in training, we gotta learn how to walk on that fire a little bit further before we can breathe it. I hope that works well for everybody. See you guys next time.